Welcome to my dad. Hey there, welcome back from Cryosleep. Did you enjoy my little montage? It would be very awkward for me if you didn't. If you don't mind me taking some of your time, I would like to talk about a game called System Shock. It's a gem from 1994, a space-bound immersive sim that has you playing as a hacker fighting against a rogue hyper-intelligent AI, which took control of an entire space station by force and is now hell-bent on killing you. So, you see that piece of junk over there? Yeah, that's the station with the killer chatbot. It's a multifunctional facility, serving as a research lab for products in genetics, pharmaceuticals, and military tech. It also uses a super powerful laser to uncover mineral deposits on Saturn's moons. Or at least, that was its intended use. Anyways, you might be wondering how the situation came to be in the first place. Like, with the development of such powerful technology, shouldn't there be some regulations put into place? At the very least, there should exist some heuristics like Asimov's free laws of robotics, right? Well, yes, of course. The thing is that in the face of corruption, even the harshest law becomes a mere suggestion. It all begins with Edward Diego, the vice president of Citadel Station a man who chose to ignore some very important suggestions many times over. What I mean is that he secretly financed the development of a mutagenic virus that was to be used as a bioweapon. While very concerning and illegal, it's not like that is a big deal for a megacorp. The real crime was that he was also planning to sell it to a rival corporation for personal profit. Now, Trioptimum, the entity that owns the station and also one third of fucking America, were already suspecting Diego as they planted a mole as his secretary. She quickly discovered his plans and alerted the rest of her team. By the time Diego caught wind of this, he was already in a race against time before the space cops came knocking. And given that Trioptimum is not only a corporation, but also an actual government, things looked quite grim for him. And that's when he calls for you, the player. A hacker that has very conveniently fallen onto his lap. The reason is that you've been caught recently hacking into dry observers and are also about to be processed in internal court. Taking advantage that both of you are on the same boat, Diego proposes you an offer you can't refuse. He needs you to hack into Shodan, the AI that's in charge of the Citadel's operations, and disable its ethical constraints. If you do so, your crimes will be pardoned, somehow, and Diego can use the resulting chaos to escape before security arrives to restrain him. So, you do so, and you even get a military-grade neural interface as a cool performance bonus. The Vice President is now able to delete all files concerning his underhanded actions and prepare for his escape, whilst you're placed under surgery to fit your new toy inside your skull. However, when you wake up you find yourself surprised that the AI went a little too crazy, a little too fast. Six months have passed while you've been on a healing coma, and the Citadel has become a galactic shitstorm. Now Shodan has taken control of the entire station and has been utilizing all of its resources and facilities to purge it of human life. This means all the military, medical and engineering systems have gone into operation in genocide setting. Diego's virus has been released and has infected most of the station, turning them into actual flesh-eating zombies. 
Whoever is not infected or outright killed are caught by the security robots and turned into cyborgs in the medical facilities. There could not be a worse situation to be caught up on, and this is how the game begins. Now, don't get fooled by the dark atmosphere. Truth be told, my gameplay experience was more like a space clown simulator, and I'm gonna tell you about it in painful detail. I loaded the game up and got a cool cutscene with nice music. It felt like I was pirating Sony Vegas or some shit. Then the main menu appeared and the music was not so awesome anymore. I made a new save with the default settings and pressed start. And there I was, finally playing but shocked and confused. The interface looked like a Bloomberg terminal and I didn't have a clue on how the controls even worked. I mashed the keyboard and mouse around and got my character to do a little jig. I continued mashing around for the next 10 minutes until I got a general idea on how to move and manage my inventory. Having achieved so much, I quit the game and went to sleep. The next day, I was ready to actually play the game. For real now. Except that I'm gonna blue ball you for another minute, because I need to explain what the game's objective is about. Obviously, the goal is to stop Shodan. She's quite intent on killing every single human being in existence, so she's cooked up some plans to destroy planet Earth. There are four missions you must finish in order to complete System Shock. First, you need to disable the mining laser that's charging up and pointing towards Earth. Then, you must jettison the biocontaminated pods that house an upgraded zombification virus before they're launched onto Earth's atmosphere. Shodan is also trying to upload herself onto Twitter.com, so you must destroy the relay antennas and put her in airplane mode before she can propagate herself onto the net. Finally, you must blow up the entire citadel as to make sure there is nothing left to house Shodan's data. To do so, you must reenact Chernobyl in the station's reactor. <laughs> However, Shodan is more shrewd than a mere monkey like you and me. So before the whole thing blows up, she begins ejecting the station's bridge, which houses her mainframe. To end the game, you must climb up there and kill her before she escapes. Generally, you'll clear objectives concerning these missions as you rise through the levels of the Citadel, but there's some necessary backtracking to be had. You don't have access to the entire station right away though, since Shodan is mean and stinky. She doesn't let you use the elevator, and since you're a hacker, your ass is too fat for the stairs. In order to progress, you'll have to weaken the AI's control over the floor by destroying her computer nodes. Only then will you be able to take a ride up and progress to the next area. To find these, you'll need to explore every single level thoroughly, which means you'll have to complete missions, solve puzzles, eliminate enemies, and hack your way through cyberspace. Knowing what to aim for in each floor and having that in mind is something vital if you don't want to get lost during the game, and I basically never knew what I was aiming for. Going back to the playthrough, the game begins at the hospital level. We wake up, get away from what's going on, and arm ourselves with a steel pipe. Immediately, we're introduced to combat, as on the next room the player is greeted by two very aggressive trash cans. Enemies in the starting area are generally very easy to deal with. If you stay aware of your surroundings, playing footsies with the zombies and servots is no big deal, as they go out of commission in a few hits. Next comes an introduction to probably the most important aspect of the game, which is looking for clues and listening to audio logs. By the way, the text and the audio of the recordings never match up, so you better get used to it. To exit the first room of the game, you gotta snoop around for an access code, so that you can unlock a door to the next area. This is generally how the pacing of System Shock is handled. Big chunks of the station are locked behind either information or triggers that you have to find and then use. In a way, completing the game is like finding and fitting pieces of a puzzle, the puzzle being the citadel itself. As you can imagine, taking the time and effort to search around carefully and then finding nothing will be quite disappointing, so the game rewards you for being as meticulous as possible by handing out items, weapons, upgrades and bits of lore as often as possible. Now that we are out of the med bay, the game truly opens up and we are left to our own devices, to explore as we see fit. Our goals for now are finding access cards for locked areas, getting long-range weapons, and destroying the computer nodes. For me, this meant 3 hours of bumbling about. 
Do take note that on the hard difficulty you only have 7 hours to clear the game, and there are 9 floors in total, so I'll let you do the math. At some point, whilst I was bashing everything with the pipe, I found a computer terminal. Clicking on it burst you into cyberspace, which you've already seen in various times throughout the video. This is a key aspect of the game, since you need to hack through cyberspace areas to unlock doors, and get important information to unlock more doors. That's really the only point of hacking, to unlock doors. Well, that and to acquire the ability to play Pong on your brain interface. In any case, if you're anything like me, you probably spaz out whenever I show cyberspace footage. Don't worry, it plays worse than it looks. The controls are almost completely different from the main game, and there's no tutorial or explanation for what the spinning cubes and stuff means. So on my first try, I just gave up after a few minutes and continued exploring the station. Not that I did much better on that front either. Soon after, I met my first real enemy, a cyborg. You can recognize them because they say, your memo, your memo, when you're near them. Maybe he's half fax machine or something. Whatever. I quickly found that the enemies in this game aren't really the smartest. I mean, I'm sure they did a fantastic job for 1994, but they're only really a challenge if they swarm you or you're severely under-equipped. Otherwise, if you manage your distance and use cover, you're pretty much clear for the whole game. Having said that, I soon died to this industrial-sized laser cutter and got sent back to the computer terminal. As if guided by the gentle yet firm hand of God, I was prompted to give hacking another spin. And the first thing I did was break the x-ray machine and hurt myself. A good thing overall, since this made me find an access card. I braved cyberspace again. By now I had looked up the controls online, so I was able to navigate properly and defeat the enemies in my way. I found the correct cube I had to touch, which opened a door somewhere in the universe. Having scraped the segment completely, I disconnected from the terminal and continued exploring. By now, I had refined my exploration strategy by using an advanced algorithm called looking at the fucking map. This helped me immensely in finding new areas and arming myself up. Not much after, I found a very comfortable looking surgery hole. There is one of these on every level and they function as a respawn mechanism. You just gotta flip a switch that's always conveniently placed next to a machine to disable the AI cyber conversion mechanism, and then you're free to die as much as you want. Of course, I didn't realize I was free to play like an idiot until later, so I kept attempting to use my brain for the rest of level 1. I crawled my way cautiously, chasing a bunch of cyborgs carefully placing their little cubicles where their line of sight doesn't work properly. After killing all of the wages in their cages, I found the computer nodes. Turns out I had missed the sign that said, computer, because I was looking at the minimap. I got to the nodes and destroyed them. Word of advice, shoot them from very far away. For some reason they have a huge blast radius and deal a significant amount of damage. Also, you see that screen on the back with the numbers changing rapidly? The number freezes once you destroy all the nodes on the level. Remember to take note of that number for every floor. You're gonna need it on the endgame. Having said all that, I went back to the elevator and continued on my journey. After a warm reception, we officially arrived onto level 2, the research labs. Here's where the controls for the mining laser are located. The plan is to destroy the thing by overloading it. To do that, we need to arm the station's shields and then fire. I imagine it works something like a drunk man pacing too close against a wall and wetting his pants from the ricochet, if that makes any sense. So, for now, the objective on this level is to grab an isotope to power the shields and then head towards a reactor in the lowest part of the station. I didn't know any of that at that moment, so while exploring I pressed a big red button with a laser label and murdered millions of people. I got congratulated by Shodan herself supposedly got escorted to a party and then got booted back to the main menu. I got a bad end. By this point it was clear to me that my brain wasn't tall enough for this ride, so I decided to consult a spoiler free walkthrough. It only really gave me a checklist of what to do on each floor and on what order, so it didn't spoil me of anything. Eventually I found the isotope in an irradiated chamber and against OSHA regulations I grabbed it with my bare hands and almost died from radiation. Then I busted the nodes and got to the reactor, not much else to say. The reactor is the level where you start seeing some more high level enemies. 
You remember the thing that vaporized me on level 1? Well, this place is full of them. They are called hoppers because they hop out of excitement when they melt human flesh. Good thing is, I found a respawn in the first 2 minutes. So my go-to strategy became to sprint towards them and bash them with my pipe until either one of us kicked the bucket. That might sound like a tedious strategy, but I'm a very patient and very stingy man. And if healthcare is free, I'm not wasting my bullets. My patience wasn't tested though, as I quickly found the thing I had to find and put the isotope in it, after some struggle. I returned to level 2 to fire the laser and was greeted by an ambush handily placed next to a respawn. A couple of deaths later, I killed everyone and blew up the lasers. Following my original analogy, we peed very hard on a wall and broke our wiener. Mommy Shodan was not very happy about this, but she informed us that genocide was still on the table since she cooked up an upgraded version of Diego's virus. I said, yes ma'am, thank you very much, and headed towards the third floor. Level 3 is maintenance. It's very dark and the enemies here are small and transparent, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to play. Thankfully, hidden around here is the best weapon in the game. Replacing the classic old pipe comes a laser rapier. For only a tiny bit of energy you can deal a huge amount of damage, so my strategy of playing the game like Minecraft just became a lot more viable. There are more things to on this floor, but for now most doors are floored. To unfloor them we must get to other floors and other doors, so we just explore the doors to get to the floor elevator. Level 4, or the storage rooms, are the second worst level in the game. In general, the station is labyrinthine and quite easy to get lost in, but there are landmarks here and there you can use once you get familiarized with the level layout. That isn't the case here. The level is a black and blue mess of Windows screensaver vomit that loops in around itself over and over. In theory, there is three separate segments that branch off from the start, but the problem is that they are barely distinguishable from each other. I, once again, walked in circles for about an hour. Worth mentioning, there's new enemies to be found in here, like the Gorilla Tiger, a mutant mix of Gorilla and Tiger. Thank you, Napoleon Dynamite! Very cool! By now, I've gotten used to the tricks the game tried to pull on me. I adopted a sleek style of exploration, peeking at corners to catch ambushes early and watching for any signs of traps. So, by this point the game stopped being a challenge for me and I progress at a faster pace. Our goal in this segment is to find and grab 4 packs of plastic explosives and an environment suit. We're gonna need explosives to take down the relay antennas and the suit to deal with irradiated areas. With a little bit of patience I accomplished the objectives and headed towards level 5. Level 5 is kinda boring. Level 6 is the executive level. This is a fancy place with the nice carpets where all the suit skill hookers, or whatever finance is all about. It's probably the longest level since it has 3 sub-levels included. What we've got to do here is enter into 3 biospheres and disable their jettison locks. Shodan is housing the upgraded virus in one of these so we gotta launch it off onto space before she throws a pot towards Earth. To jettison one, we've got to unlock them all, so off onto the jungles we go. Two of these areas are quite easy, the one that houses the virus isn't. You see, we picked up that environmental suit earlier, so that we can explore this level without dying almost immediately. But regardless, the virus chips away at your health every second you're in this place. Suit or no suit. To make matters worse, since the sub-level counts as its own area, there is no medbay, if you die in here it's game over. This is arguably the hardest segment of the game. The place is chock full of enemies and you need to be fast and precise to survive the virus. This will probably take you many attempts as you explore different parts of the map before dying. On each attempt, take in mental note of enemy positioning and the area's routes, until you have enough information to pinpoint the button. Once we have all the locks disabled, we need to pull the master lever to dispose of the contaminated pod. Here's where we fight the first miniboss, Edward Diego. Turns out, he ratted out a group of survivors in exchange for Shodan's protection. She, in return, converted him into a really decked out cyborg, equipping him with two laser rapiers and machine gun arms. Though, she didn't bother programming a proper pathing algorithm into him. We defeat him and he teleports away, to annoy us later, of course. With him gone, we switch the lever, only to be told that there's damage to the power relay and that we need to go back to level 3. If we try to go up, we're told ELEVATOR DISABLED. So, there's only one way forwards. I ran my way back and got to the previously locked area of the maintenance floor. It took me a while to figure out what I should be doing, but you need to take an interface emulator and use it on one of these blue squares. 
You are supposed to search and click on them until you find Relay 428. Running out of patience by that point, I zoomed back to the executive floor, pulled the lever and jumped into the elevator. Or so I intended. I had only disabled the jettison lock, so now I had to go back to Infected Grove and, well, actually jettison the thing. I was greeted by a bunch of assholes that sound like Bowser throwing an item in Mario Kart 64. I killed them and then pulled the lever. As a reward, I got a nice animation that I couldn't close unless I opened the options menu. This was my first hint that the game maybe was a little unstable. With the virus mission cleared, you immediately get an email prompting you to prepare for the antenna mission. Rebecca here asks you to go back to level 4 and get the plastic explosives, the ones I didn't pick up to save inventory space. Completely impatient by now, I get the things, get lost for a bit in between levels, get in the wrong elevator a couple of times, and finally get to floor 7. Systems Engineering. Immediately upon arriving, we get an Engi email from Shodan. Idiot. Then, I crash the game. I get stuck on a loop of the game crashing whenever I load my save for about 20 minutes until it somehow fixes itself. Anyhow, I don't remember much of the level, it's worse than level 4. The Windows screensaver is now black and red, great. In standard fashion for me, once I found the first antenna, I had no fucking idea what to do. I grabbed the explosive, I clicked everywhere, I circled the antenna to see if I missed something, I threw the thing around, I began praying, and then finally, I realized that there was a text telling me that I had to open the panel beforehand. I opened the thing and placed the plastique. Luckily, I actually had a sense to run away before the explosion happened on the second antenna. I continued exploring and finding the antennas while getting very, very lost. Now, around this point in time, I made a big mistake that almost made the game unfinishable. I saved on a sliver of health, with an enemy behind my back and about to fire, with no way to respawn. I saved luck myself. But I am a patient man. I am a patient man because I realize others must be patient with me every single day. So I reloaded for about an hour until I got unstuck. After some more exploring, I took down all of the antennas. With them destroyed, Shodan veers the station towards Earth as a last resort. So we need to go back to our reactor to blow the whole station up. I get there and put in the self-destruct code, which is comprised of the numbers from the destroyed nodes. I forget to pull the lever, but I get a Vietnam flashback and double check. After this, things begin to get real. Every level is up to the neck with enemies, and we have to deal with a shaky cam effect every couple of seconds. In theory, from here we're supposed to go to level 5 and try to get an escape pod. Cyborg Diego will then fight us again, and we'll defeat him only to discover that the life pods have been disabled, and Shodan is circumcising the station so she can escape. But because level 5 is boring, you can skip all of that and get to floor 8 straight away. The security level is this super cool tower kind of deal, where you gotta lay low since there's enemies stationed in every vector. I wish I could tell you more about it, but I skipped most of the floor by accident by ping-ponging my way across a chasm instead of activating the bridge like I was supposed to. In all honesty, it's a pretty doable jump. Before we get to the bridge, we have one last boss fight with Diego. He's got no new moves and he's as cheesable as always. We get through him and now we're in the end. Level 9, or the bridge, serves as Shodan's brain, and she's remodeled the place to make it look like it. This is easily the most fun part of the game. There is no respawn and the enemies are tough, so you gotta be on your toes. The main computer is protected by four force fields, and you must disable each one of them in a different area, every area being a sort of special challenge. Then we get to the control room, where we find some bodybuilding cyborgs dies to the socks. I'm fucking miring, bro, just look at those quads and delts. These sauce fiends are protecting the computer terminal that serves as an access point to show them. We get through them, have a hack battle with a big bat herself, and just like that we have finished the game. The final cutscenes tell us that our protagonist returns to his criminal ways, and that the world seemingly moves on, uncaring. As for me, I really enjoyed the game. It's super immersive and really well made for the time. In general, the art history of the thing is top notch. I also enjoyed a lot how early 90s the thing feels, especially with the world building being basically an extension of William Gibson's Neuromancer. By the way, I only said that so you don't think I'm irredeemably stupid. I swear I know how to read.